Hello, everybody. We're going to, we got a few minutes here before we get started. Uh, I'm Steve Neighbor, city engineer. I've got a few uh, fellow team members here from uh, uh, the city as well to help give a presentation overview of uh, uh, McKinley Avenue reconstruction. So uh, uh, we've got some concepts. We haven't started the formal design yet, but, uh, um, but we'd like to share some concepts and go through uh, kind of a little background and, and uh, what we're looking at here. So we'll wait a few minutes here. I see I'm seeing lots of people uh, joining on. So uh, you know, thanks everybody for, for joining us. Again, we're here for the McKinley Avenue uh, reconstruction public uh, public meeting. So, so oh, it looks like there's up to a dozen. Where are they out somewhere in holding? Nope, they're all just continuing to file in here. And uh, yeah, there was I think if I remember correctly, at least uh, I don't know what maybe thirty about thirty registered. So oh, well, uh, it, it shows on the screen right now that there's twelve that are are yeah. uh, are actually trying to get in right now. Yep. Yep. Uh, and yet I'm only seeing what six on the screen. Does the host need to let them in? Nope. We okay. we uh we have a, a few of us that are listed as hosts and yeah, we, if they if they need to be admitted, but they, yeah, they're all just coming in. A lot of times we just get people join right at six. So we'll right. we'll pause for, for a little bit. I'm I'm like I said, I'm seeing uh Tammy, Scott, Paul Minx, Mike Armstrong, Marcia, uh uh Tiffany Irving. Uh, Council Member Voss, uh, Lauren, uh, Dave. So those are the folks that are already in, and also a number of city staff, uh, Lisa, um, a number of city staff that are in the, the meeting. So, uh, but we'll wait a, a couple minutes, two, three minutes, just to allow people time to to okay. get logged on here. I, I know it takes some time. I don't see Carl on the screen. Is he, is, I see his, his name on the list, of course. Yeah. The, the only folks who will show up on the screen are the ones who have recently, recently talked. Yeah. So, so otherwise until people say something, if you see people say something, then they'll, they'll move up, move up in the, the screen. Okay. Cause I was going to yeah. say that there was, there's Paul. I, I see him. So I, 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 you know, but it's got him on mute and him on, and no picture. Yeah. And that's why I was wondering, I was just concerned to make sure that he was able to get it to get to this meeting. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, he's he's there. So yeah, yeah. If and uh, see, if you want to see more people on the screen, you'll have to adjust the the screen. You'll make either the presentation smaller or the pictures of people larger. Yeah. Yep. And I I will would like to point out this meeting is is being recorded. Um, that's that's kind of the standard setup for our city public meetings uh, via Zoom, and uh, that does give us an advantage that we can uh, post the recording on our website too. So if there are folks who who uh, can't make it tonight for some reason, they, they'll they can watch the presentation anytime. It'll take us a little time to uh, to download it and get it up on the website, but uh, I wouldn't think hopefully too long uh, we could have it on the website you know in a week or so uh, post it up there. So. A answer a question for me is is I mean they they uh, the city posts uh, uh, different things on the on the TV screen not the you know uh, uh, what is it channel channel, channel. seven yep uh, is is there any chance that this is will wind up on TV at some time. Uh, you know I'd have to talk to our communications department on that to see if this would be something. Uh, they would put up there or not. I, we we typically haven't put um, project specific public meetings up there um, just because they pertain, you know, um, not that maybe folks on the far northeast side would not not be interested in this, but uh, um, but I, I'd have to talk to them about that. That's a good question. Yeah. The only the con problem that I see all the time is that is that you know we're, we're, we've we've been there's a lot of people that still don't have access to Zoom, sure. uh, you know, and 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 particularly some of my older neighbors, uh, it's the uh, 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 trouble getting them in, really involved or into using stuff like that. Uh, uh, but they all know how to watch TV, <laughs> so so it would be uh, if 
if you find out that, that you've got some people that would do that, be sure and let me know, would you? Because I could maybe publicize it ahead of time into our area. Okay. Uh, uh, just knowing when, you know, when it was going to be run. Uh, and maybe we can get some people seeing it that uh, wouldn't see it otherwise. Okay. Sounds good. All right. We'll get started here and just you got some more people that are popping in. We'll get started here in just a minute. So here. Okay, we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and at least start with uh, instructions here. I'm going to go ahead uh, and then uh, and mute everybody uh, just so uh, we don't have uh, uh, too much uh, interference there. But uh, um, we'll, uh, um, so we'll, we'll, what we'll do is we'll give a, uh, a presentation, kind of an overview of the project, uh, some of the concepts we're looking at here, and then uh, we'll open it up for questions and discussions. And so uh, to start, my, my name is Steve Neighbor. Uh, I'm the city engineer uh, for the city of Des Moines, uh, for our city, also a resident uh, of Des Moines as well. And I've got a handful of uh, <coughs> city staff with me, including uh, uh, Brett Lewis, uh, project engineer, Jen Dokovich, traffic engineer, Dave Camp, chief design engineer, uh, Jeff Wiggins, transportation planner, uh, as well, and John Davis, city traffic engineer. Um, also, a uh, note, it uh, uh, looks like I see uh, uh, some of our, our council members. I see council member uh, Carl Voss uh, on the phone as well. Uh, and, uh, and, and we'll see. I think uh, council member Ma uh, Gatto is, I know he's, he's been involved with the project and, and we'll see. He may be joining us here too, soon. Uh, we also have Tom Block, deputy city engineer as well. So a uh, number of folks uh, from the city to uh, uh, here as well tonight. And, and I want to thank everyone for for joining us this evening. Uh, we we would we would much rather be in person. We we are obviously like everyone hoping this uh, uh, this pandemic we're in uh, is 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 hopefully coming to an end soon. Uh, and, and so uh, um, so, but I appreciate everyone uh, joining us on Zoom. It does uh, the meeting is being recorded. That's an that's one positive that. Uh, from doing a virtual meeting, it allows us to easily record the meeting, and that way we could post it on our website, and folks can watch it on 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 YouTube. And so we'll hope to do that in a in a week or so after we can download this. And uh, but uh, tonight is to talk about the McKinley Avenue reconstruction project. Uh, we are in the concept development phase, uh, planning phase. Uh, we have not started the detailed design where we uh, you know design the roads. Uh, Determine elevations, design drainage, storm sewer, size storm sewers, uh, and and do all that detailed work to put together construction documents for uh, for bidding and then construction. And, and so we we like to hold public meetings early in the process because uh, obviously we don't want to spend a lot of time uh, designing something if there could be things that change or comments that could impact the design. So um, so while it does seem odd that. We, we, what I'm saying is we may not have the answers or all the details. We don't have them all at this point, uh, but uh, we will, we will, would like to present some concepts uh, to at least uh, uh, get, get started here. And so uh, <clears throat> kind of some uh, kind of typical uh, Zoom functions here. Uh, again, I, we've got uh, uh, everyone muted here, and that's just to, to make sure that there's not background. Uh, we're going to give a presentation, and then and then at the end, we are going to have a lot of time for questions and comments. Uh, for those of you on Zoom, we ask that you raise your hand. And so if you click, hopefully you have a menu bar. If you're on a computer that looks kind of like this, that's on the screen, and you can click on the Participants tab, and that will allow you to uh, to raise your hand. And then when you raise your hand, we'll work to get you help get you unmuted. You can unmute yourself once we uh, unmute you as well and then uh and then we could uh take questions comments if you're on a phone and i'm not seeing anybody on a on a cell phone that's not in the zoom 
uh, yet, but uh, oh, no, I just now I take that back. I just see a phone number uh, jo joining us here. <coughs> so if you are, um, if you're on a phone and you'd like to raise your hand, you press the button star nine. Uh, and, and then to unmute yourself or mute yourself, you press star six. So being on a phone, uh, if you'd like to raise your hand to have a comment or question uh, when we get to the end of the presentation, uh, please raise your hand by pressing star nine. And then, then when we uh, call, on you, call on you, you would uh, unmute yourself with star six. Uh, so star nine and star six for those on the phone. If you're on the Zoom on the computer, uh, you please use the participants tab and that will give you an option to raise your hand. So, so looking at our, uh, our existing roadway cross section, uh, we're, we're, again, we're focusing on South Union uh, to, uh, uh, we're looking at the section from South Union and set to Southwest 9th and, and uh, our existing cross section in this section uh, is, is considered a rural cross section uh, it, it does not really have much drainage uh, that, that obviously you'll see has caused issues. Um, the, you know, uh, it's got just shoulders and the water kind of sits along the shoulders. There is a sidewalk on the north side only. Um, and it does, uh, we do have some steep side slopes that we'll be uh, uh, working against with, the, with this project. And so uh, you can see the existing road is anywhere from 20 to 24 feet wide. Uh, and, and so, um, again, no curbs and gutters. And this is kind of a photo. I think most are, are familiar with uh, McKinley Avenue, this section. But, you know, again, we talk about there's not, not really much drainage. Uh, the, road, uh, the, road, the road needs to be uh, fixed and fixed properly. It needs to be fully reconstructed. Uh, we could come in and, and do, and do a, just a quick mill and overlay, but uh, that would uh, not last very long. And, that, and we don't recommend that in terms of uh, the longevity of the road, uh, if, you know, if you just resurface a road that has uh, base failure is issues, those issues will come to the surface uh, fairly quickly right after putting down the new asphalt. So, uh, so we, 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 our recommendation is to do a full reconstruction of the street. Uh, again, we also have the issues that we're dealing with with the lack of drainage on the street. So, um, and so uh, that's, that's a challenge here as well. Uh, we also are looking at, uh, um, you know, uh, you know, sidewalk gaps, gaps in our 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 sidewalk network on the street as well, and so that's a challenge we'd we'd like to address with this with this project. So uh, we talked a little, I talked a little bit about this before, but uh, uh, you know, we, we're dealing with steep side slopes here. Uh, uh, you know, uh, with with a lot of the driveways are already uh, steep to begin with, so. Um, so this is a, definitely a, a, a challenge that we have when, when we, as we get and start to design. So this this effort's uh, been kind of has been planned and in the works uh, uh, for for you know for a handful of years now, uh, starting with the section from South Union and sa Southeast Fifth uh, that was done uh, 2008 2011 timeframe. So that's shown in pink on the screen. Uh, then in 2018 to 2019. Uh, the section from Southeast 5th to Southeast 14th Street uh, was reconstructed. So, uh, so the city started at essentially is, is now working our way west. Uh, and the next segment we're looking at, we're here to talk about tonight, is Southwest 9th to South Union. Uh, we do have plans uh, and have been in, uh, to ultimately uh, uh, rehabilitate, uh, uh, improve the road uh, further west all the way to Fleur Drive. As well as uh, as well as going east of of US 69 Southeast 14th Street as well, uh, so the, hopefully the screen kind of paints the picture. Um, but uh, um, like I said, the section from uh, US 69 to South Union was already been completed, and so we're going we're making our way west now. So just to look at that section, I know a lot of you are probably familiar with that section, but uh, the section between uh, Southeast 5th to Southeast 14th. Uh, currently is a 41-foot roadway width uh, from curb to curb. Uh, and so uh, it currently has, uh, it's a three-lane roadway. It has a bi-directional uh, center left turn lane. Uh, and like I said, it's 41 feet wide. This was done 
uh, the time frame between 2008 and 2019 in different seg segments. So when we look at, uh, we the city has uh, moved DSM, which is our transportation master plan. Uh, it, it does identify uh, McKinley Avenue as a core bi bike network facility. Uh, and, and so uh, the trans our transportation master plan is, uh, is what, uh, that, you know, it gives us the vision and plan for our existing and future needs for, for all modes of transportation. When we, uh, when we look at streets, we look at streets through a complete streets lens, meaning that streets are for a number of users. We want to provide a safe street network for all users. That's, that's not just motorists, but uh, bicyclists, pedestrians, uh, and transit users. And so, and that's, that's important to, when we, to, you know, to achieve that goal when we're, uh, when we're planning, planning our street network. And so, um, and so be, that being said, uh, we kind of look back at the picture, uh, what, what we've looked at, when we look at the planning efforts that were done to move DSM, uh, the city staff don't feel uh, that, uh, and we'll show it, get to it here in a second, but a 41 foot roadway width uh, is, is necessary. We, we, we think the road can be a little bit narrower and also that the, the, the center bi-directional left turn lane uh, is not needed in this area. And so, uh, so we, let me get to a cross section here, what we're looking at here. But this, this map right here shown in green, again, is, is showing our project limits. Uh, and that's again, Southwest 9th to uh, uh, South Union Street here. You can see it's about a half mile limit here, half mile stretch. And so uh, uh, when we look at our, our move DSM planning document, again, it does, this McKinley Avenue does, is a connection uh, between uh, nodes. Uh, it does connect our neighborhoods to, to, to commercial nodes. It, it is on the bike, it is on the proposed bike net, bicycle network. Uh, it's not on a transit route, not on a truck route, but it is a primary uh, response route for emergency vehicles. And so these are kind of things that we look at when we start to develop our design concepts. Uh, so, uh, speed limit is 30 miles an hour. We run speed models and 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 check that to make sure that is the appropriate speed limit. And the and the multiple speed models we run show that 30 miles an hour is the uh, the proper speed limit. It does have about a little over 7,000 vehicles a day, so uh, it does have some traffic. Uh, and there's not currently parking on any either side. So again, these are things that we look at when we do design. We we check it against our 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 our, our planning documents and 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 where we want to be uh, with it being on a, on a emergency uh, uh, response route. Uh, it, we, you know, that, that would be looking at uh, uh, 11 foot uh, travel lanes. Uh, and like I said, it is on the bike network. So what we're looking at when we piece together and use our planning documents, uh, like I said, the, the section to the east uh, is 41 feet back to back. Uh, we believe that the appropriate section could be reduced a, a little bit to 39 back to back. And like I said, the, the, the center, yeah, kind of center bi-directional left turn lane is, uh, um, is, is not needed. And so uh, because we want, we want to uh, uh, build that bike bicycle network, uh, the, the, uh, we, would, we would be recommending uh, buffered bike lanes. So that, but when I say buffered bike lanes, uh, using pavement markings, uh, there'd be a three-foot buffer using pavement markings and then a five-foot bike lane. Uh, and then uh, we're trying to achieve, uh, uh, we would like to have a, a grass parkway, uh, also known as a parking, uh, to separate uh, the sidewalks. And we'd like to put sidewalks, uh, we're proposing sidewalks on both sides of the road. So I'll leave that cross-section up there again. Uh, you know, like I said, the set, just to give you reference point, the section to the east, east of South Union is 41 feet back to back. Uh, with this proposed cross section, we would like to achieve that cross section to the east uh, as well. So with the new pavement being 41 feet wide, or I'm sorry, with the pavement to the east being 41 feet wide, we could we could we would be able to mill off the pavement markings and restripe it to uh, to a similar cross section to this. Uh, it, it is obviously a wider pavement to the east, but uh, um, but still, we could we could get this we could definitely get this cross section to work to the east as well, so we could have that continuity um, through the corridor. Whoops. 
So looking at it from a conceptual high, uh, view from, from an aerial, uh, you know, here's what, what we'd be looking at. Uh, here, starting at Southwest 9th Street, uh, you can see uh, the, the sidewalks drawn here in kind of a tan, tan color. Uh, and then obviously the turn lane at Southwest 9th would be maintained. Uh, we, is, is recommended. And you can kind of see with our steep slopes, uh, again, that's going to be be a challenge. Uh, we, we would need to be uh, replacing the driveway aprons uh, significantly far back uh, into the properties. Uh, so, so folks would get new driveway aprons, uh, but we'd have to go back further uh, than, than, than typical reconstruction projects because of the grade challenges here. So uh, so there's no question that grade challenges are are, uh, are 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 a challenge to say the least in the, on this project. And so this kind of shows the segment between Southwest Ninth and Southwest Sixth. As we continue going from between Southwest Sixth to Southwest Third, again we continue to see we have to replace the pavement. Uh, kind of we have to do the approach, rebuild the approaches to the side streets, such as Southwest Sixth and Southwest Fifth. Uh, and uh, as well as going a ways back uh, into into each of the driveways, and so um, so that being said, the the public right of way, uh, like I mentioned, was uh, let me go back here was six, is uh, is about sixty six feet wide, uh, and so oops, yeah, the right of way went to sixty six feet wide. So you can see that that puts the right of way, the public right of way. Uh, about just beyond the back, uh, behind the sidewalk that you see here. Uh, so it is, it is, you know, you figure the road, just kind of a reference, the existing road is about 20, 20 to 24 feet wide. The right-of-way is 66 feet wide. And so just to kind of give you a reference where the public right-of-way is. But, but we anticipate because of the steep slopes uh, that we're going to need uh, uh, to work with the individual property areas along the corridor uh, to att obtain easements uh, to, to blend the grading and also uh, replace the driveways further back to make this to, to soften the slopes of the driveways uh, with, the, with the project. So um, these easements, we, you know, as we get going into design, uh, we would have our real estate coordinators uh, work individually with each, each individual property you know, that's impacted that we would need an easement with uh, to, to, to obtain those easements and, and work through the, through the project. So again, here's the eastern se segment that you can hopefully see on the screen uh, going between Southwest 3rd and South Union Street. Uh, again, uh, definitely uh, continue the challenges. The slopes even uh, are even steeper in this section. And, and again, these are concepts that we're definitely going to have to work through uh, with, with each property owner on those driveway limits and how they, the configuration exists. So, uh, but again, uh, looking at uh, that 39-foot back-to-back roadway, uh, generally, the turn lanes would be maintained at South Union and Southwest 9th, and we'd be looking at sidewalks, uh, five-foot-wide sidewalks on both sides, uh, all the way down the street to, to build our sidewalk network, and then, like I said, the, the buffer bike lane network as well, and then uh, we feel that, uh, that, that we would not, our proposal would be to, in the future, near future, continue that cross-section, so instead of having the three-lane uh, cross section to the east of South Union, uh, we would be restriping the pavement so that it would make this cross section con con consistent and provide two lanes with the buffer bike lanes uh, to the east as well. So we'd have a continuous corridor. And uh, and just these are just photos of reconstruction projects. When we talk about it again, we're not talking uh, a mill and overlay here. We're talking full reconstruction. Uh, there, there, there's no sugarcoating this. Uh, I mean, you, you've all uh, probably seen what's going on in Fleur Drive. Uh, that's full reconstruction. We're talking digging the pavement down uh, to the dirt, to the subgrade, and, and rebuilding an entire new pavement structure uh, from the ground up. Uh, we also be looking at storm sewer installation, so, so utility work underground. And uh, uh, so th these photos kind of show the process, right? Removing the pavement, then doing the utility work, storm sewer installation. Uh, then it's then it's building that rock base, and then paving uh, a full depth pavement on top of the rock base, and then doing sidewalks, and then restoration. So it's there's no sugarcoating this. Uh, this is a very impactful process, uh, and 
uh, requiring, uh, you know, temporary uh, measures. Uh, and so here's kind of some more photos uh, of what, what to kind of expect. Uh, you know, you can see here road closer through traffic. We've got lots of gravel um, and, and we'll have at times even to require temporary access, gravel access to, to get people to their driveways uh, uh, during construction. So um, whether that, and so they, again, it's going to have to be uh, the contract, a team of the contractor in the city working with the, re uh, the residents that live along the corridor to, to provide that access, whether it be through a temporary gravel driveway or, or maybe it's a side street parking of some sorts. Uh, it, it's it's, it's going to be challenging and impactful. Um, uh, but uh, in terms of, you know, the need, again, uh, the only way, the recommended way is to fix this road is to full reconstruction, rebuild it from the ground up. Uh, so that we uh, properly, uh, you know, so that we uh, are, are not coming back here to, to do reconstruction in, uh, in a long time, to say the least. Looking at our time frame, we're proposing to start a design phase and that will go for the, the next, uh, for the rest of the year. Uh, and then construction would start uh, in, in 22 and then continue through 23. So it's a two construction season project you probably see mostly uh, utility work uh, uh, starting in 2022. Uh, and then again, the full construction carrying all the way through 2023. So it's a two, we anticipate it to be a two construction season uh, project. So again, this year we'd be uh, working on design uh, as well as uh, we'd start property acquisition process uh, and then uh, uh, coordination with utilities, uh, with the Des Moines Waterworks, with uh, Mid American Gas Company, uh, and uh, and then also uh, this year would do uh, actual just detailed design and, and plan preparation. So, so I want to flash this up on the screen. Brett Lewis, who's with us today uh, on the on the meeting, is the project engineer. His his contact information is up there. I'll read it uh, just since we got a couple folks on the phone. Uh, Brett Lewis, uh, project engineer. His number is five one five two zero eight. 4024. Again, that's 515 208 4024. And his email is B A Lewis at dmgov.org. B A L E W I S at dmgov.org. Uh, so, again, if you think of questions or comments later after this meeting, uh, please feel free to, to contact and reach out to Brett. Uh, if you're if you're someone that lives right on the core on this stretch of the corridor as we move into the design process and again that could take some time I'm not saying this will be uh, next week by any means but, but likely potentially this summer uh, you you know if you're on the corridor and there's some impacts uh, such as we need to get an easement or whatnot you you'll be uh, uh, likely directly contacted by Brett and or uh, one of the city's real estate coordinators all right so let me uh, Circle back here, um, and I'll pause and let's uh, let's take some some time for questions and comments. Let me go to the screen here that has the instructions. Again, uh, we'd ask that if you have if you'd like to ask a question or comment, uh, if you could please raise your hand, uh, and then we'll we'll call on you. If you're uh, if you're on Zoom, uh, you can see that there's part this participants box. If you open that up, that should give you the opportunity to raise your hand. Uh, also have the controls to, to mute and unmute yourself. Uh, and then if you're on a phone and you have a comment or question, please press star nine to raise your hand and then to unmute yourself, press star six. Okay, so I'll pause. And, and like I said, let's see if I, we could uh, have some time here for, for questions and comments. Uh, I don't know if, uh, while well, we're waiting for people to, to raise their hand and Come on, Brett and, and Brett and or Jeff or John. Did I miss any anything on the in the presentation? I forget to mention. No, I don't think so. I I think you covered it. Um, yeah, I would just like to like to kind of get folks' feedback and and just see uh, kind of gauge what uh, what resonant thoughts are at this okay. point. All right. Uh, so I see. Uh, let's start with Jake. I'm going to, Jake, I, I, I'm going to ask you to, to unmute yourself here. Okay. Okay, Jake, you should be able to hear you. Yeah, can you hear me? Yep. yep. Oh, great. 
So yeah, Jake Olive, I'm actually the uh, the property owner of the, the commercial property on the west corner there. So of that strip mall and the tavern. And I'm just curious about uh, during this construction, which I fully support, I think it's great, it's well needed. Um, what will I need to tell my tenant of that tavern um, during this construction phase? Since you, you said, you mentioned a closure, would they have to close their business um, or would it still be open? It's not like a, a high, super high traffic, but it, it does have 10 to 15 cars in there at a time. And it's right on the corner there. It's the Ferrum Investment Properties, uh, properties that are. Okay. Oh, Brett, Brett, I don't know if I'll let you. Yeah. yeah, that's one question. And then the second one is, um, you mentioned the steep grades, kind of thinking about the Southeast Fifth area that was recently redone between Park and Indianola. I know you did a lot of uh, retaining wall work there. Is any of that budgeted for this project or is it only just grading? Those would be my two questions, thanks. Okay. All right, thank you, Jake. Uh, I don't know if Dave Camp or, or, or uh, or Brett, if you want to chime in, so we got the questions of Jake is asking about uh, access to, to the commercial property at the southeast corner of Southwest Ninth and McKinley, uh, and then also uh, steep grades. Are we looking at just grading, or could it be retaining walls? I can. Yeah, yeah, I could, I could tackle those uh, at least to start. So, um, I think, I think the fact that your properties um, are are on the western edge of the project is obviously going to be beneficial compared to if they were in the middle of the project. Um, and actually I would currently foresee, and, and again, we're, we're kind of at the front end obviously of, of design. We, we would obviously need to see what sort of um, work would actually occur along McKinley at your, at your driveway locations. But as far as closing those businesses during construction, that, that would not be considered. Um, I mean, we would use either temporary accesses uh, in conjunction with signage uh, to alert folks that, you know, uh, business access has changed to another location or, or some way to get your customers in there throughout the construction. Um, I mean, like Steve said, I think it's, it's definitely fair to point out that um, these projects are very impactful, but that said, um, we will try our hardest to maintain access to those businesses uh, for sure throughout the project, one way or another. Um, and then as far as retaining walls, yeah, again, I mean, we're, we're kind of, again, at the front end of, of this design process. So we do foresee that there are gonna be retaining walls uh, installed as part of this project just because of the existing slopes. You're, you're absolutely right that that's gonna be, um, you know, kind of a tool in our toolbox to use. And I think a lot of times it depends on, you know, what's, what is there that we're trying to protect for one thing, say trees and obviously structures and other things. And a lot of times it's property owner um, preference as well. Some folks don't like retaining walls, others do. So we need to go through the engineering and talk with property owners and kind of see what the best fit is for specific properties. Does that, does that answer your questions? Yeah, I think so. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Um, and just, uh, I'm not sure if you're aware, but that uh, down near my property, there's a, quite a huge culvert that uh, a creek is diverted under the roadway, just um, under underneath nearly the, the Green State Bank there. So just wanted to make sure you're aware of that as well. Okay. I assume that's going to be replaced. Yeah, we will, uh, a lot of these details are going to be sorted out here soon as we really get into uh, some of the design details that Steve had mentioned. Okay. Thank yeah. you, Jake. Okay, and I see uh, Sherry. Uh, Sherry, let me, let me see if I can unmute you here. Yep. Okay. All right, yep. I have a couple, a two-part question, um, and we joined just a little bit late, so maybe you've already covered this and I missed it, and if so, I apologize. No worries. Um, but on that, when you go to redo this, you talked about utility, you're working with the utility companies, so are those utilities going to be buried 
So we'll have buried utilities along there with no poles or, um, and also are we going to be including fiber in on that? Okay, so uh, so in terms of the utility poles, yeah, there, there's not a plan uh, to, to bury the overhead utilities. Uh, we can only have uh, uh, Mid-American Energy move the utility poles if they're in conflict. We can't actually require, we cannot require them uh, to, to bury the overhead utilities. Uh, that, that cost is uh, usually in the range, just to kind of give a rough estimate, it's usually somewhere between uh, 70 and $100,000 per pole if we were to bury the overhead utilities. So it's, it's uh, um, say the least, it would be uh, um, you know, a massive expense. So we, so we would not be burying the overhead utilities they might have. They would like. They may have to be relocated or moved, shifted uh, in terms of the poles. Or there could be instances where, say, a gas main or water main is in conflict with a new proposed storm sewer. Uh, that may have to be relocated, lowered, uh, raised, moved. Uh, we're, we're, you know, again, we're not sure yet. So that that would be the extent of the utilities uh, in terms of fiber. Uh, the city is uh, is uh, as you as you may have seen in the news. We are are uh, excited to 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 get more uh, uh, service in our in our city, and so uh, um, the fiber would would not be installed as part of this project. They typically uh, come the private entities come in and they do uh, uh, boring. Uh, they do tr uh, trenchless boring, which still still is um, is construction in the area. They have equipment, and so there is some restoration needed, but most of it's uh, installed in trenchless. Uh, I'm not a, aware of, of Metronet's or, or or the fiber company's schedules at this time, but I, I know they're definitely uh, uh, excited to get started. So so the fiber would not be as part of this project at, at this time. Um, that's not to say that as things progress in the design, they they may try and coordinate something. We may coordinate something, but uh, to be honest, uh, when we're talking about with the fiber companies. Uh, they're they're looking at doing a mass installation in, uh, to the entire city, which uh, you know you're talking installing uh, uh, you know say 900 miles of fiber in like two or three years. So so it's I'm not quite sure of their schedule yet. So but it, it's not 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 anticipated this time that it would be with this project. So. Okay. Yeah. All right. I see uh, Paul. Uh, Minx, I'm going to ask Paul to unmute yourself, Paul. Okay, we can hear you, Paul. Yep. Oh. Uh, hello, Paul. Paul, uh, Paul you, you are unmuted, so we, could, we can hear you. So if you... Okay. I apologize, Paul. We'll, uh, we are showing that you're unmuted and we, we heard you briefly uh, a little bit there, but uh, I'm not, not able to hear you right, right now. So why don't we, uh, we'll go to uh, Mike Armstrong. So let me uh, switch here. All right, Mike, uh, uh, let's see if we can unmute yourself. Okay, Mike. Good evening. Um, Mike Armstrong, I'm with the Street Collective, um, and I just wanted to say that, like, um, I wanted to express my support for this project um, and the design that I'm seeing here, um, knowing that while this may not be an immediate connection for walking and biking, um, that it is part of our core network and we have to start building out those pieces. Um, and just seeing sort of the long-term value and importance of it, of connecting from the Great Western Trail all the way over to Indianola and Easter Lake, um, and just being a very um, fantastic asset for the South Side. Um, and again, as you say, like, this will be a very impactful project. And I think from our end, like, we very much appreciate trying to put in sidewalks, bike lanes, um, 
they sort of move DSM design elements through the first time um, rather than going back, again, to reduce that impact on neighbors. Um, so I'm just really pleased to see that. I know it's a trip, uh, pretty tricky area, as you said, with the slopes and the constraints, but um, really excited to see that and what it can mean for the south side moving forward. Yeah. Th thank you, thank you. Okay. All right, let me pause for a little bit and see. Okay, here we go. I see um, the phone number 5303. So let's see if uh, if you can unmute. Uh, you can either press star six. Um, okay, we can hear you. Hi, um, this is Carol. I wanted to ask, and along the line of the biking, I ride a bike myself and I'm a trail user and a road user and I commute sometimes to work on my bike. Um, however, I would be very concerned about riding my bike on McKinley um, with the three foot section and then the bike. Um, and I wanted to see if there's any other options that you can consider for the bike, because I know that's going to take up what, 13 foot on each side of the road. Um, I believe, and I was going to try and make it over there. Does Indianola Road have a bike sidewalk where it's combo? A shared use trail. Uh, I, I, yep. Yep. Portions of it. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Was that considered at all? Because that way, at least there would be, you know, curb and grass in between. Um, and I myself would feel a lot safer on this road. Um, with something like that. Plus, I think it would take up less of our road. So, so we did actually, uh, uh, to answer your question, we did actually consider that. Uh, the, the, the issues with, uh, with a shared use separate trail on a street like this uh, is the number of driveways. Uh, you, you would have issues with one, the frequency of the driveways, also the grades to, to, for the, to match the driveways. Uh, would be it would be a challenge, and so we 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 believe this is uh, uh, the the preferred and and uh, safest alternative. I mean, in terms of uh, you know, say extremely novice users, say such as as, as for example, uh, you know, uh, my, uh, kids or whatnot. You know, they they obviously they can ride on the sidewalks, but uh, uh, in terms of uh, the connectivity of the network uh, with the number of driveways, we feel that this is. Uh, uh, the, that's the main reason for, for recommending this cross-section. Uh, the other matter is um, maintenance standpoint. Uh, it, the, with, with this uh, design, uh, you know, obviously the snow removal uh, is, is, is completed at the same time as the street. Uh, and so, um, so that's, that's an advantage from a maintenance standpoint. Also, when you look to the east, uh, you know, again, we, we are, we do plan to continue the cross section east of South Union. And now that section is already built, but because the street is actually wider than what we're proposing here, uh, we can fit this cross section and continue the network. We, we would not want to switch, you know, go from a, a, a separate share use path to back on street to, to back the other way, you know, it, it, so, so we, we are looking to provide a continuous corridor um, you know, you know, with, with, with this effort. And so I don't know if, if others, uh, any, if I, from other city staff of other comments, if I missed anything in that, but that's the generalist is the number of driveways, uh, which is the factor here, uh, for, for, for this cross section and continuity. So. Okay. Carol, does that, does that answer your question? Or? It answers it. Um, is five foot bike lane the thinnest bike lane you can do? And uh, same yes. with sidewalks. Is five foot, or you can do four foot sidewalks, correct? Uh, well, with our design standards, five foot is is the is the minimum for a for a bike lane on street. So, um, and in this case, we we are with our design standards, we recommend the three foot buffer as well. 
Uh, so, and then in terms of the sidewalks, uh, the, the minimum that we install is five feet because uh, Americans with Disabilities Act requirements re require that you need, if you, you could do a four foot sidewalk, but then every 200 feet, you would need a five foot passing zone. Uh, and then also a four foot sidewalk is not, uh, um, you know, is, 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 is narrower and not as comfortable for two people to, to walk on. It also doesn't really allow, you know, when you talk about pushing strollers or folks in wheelchairs passing each other, uh, and the five foot's the standard that we install all throughout the city. And, uh, and that's pretty common. I, I actually work uh, elsewhere at other cities in the Midwest as well is, is, is pretty common for a standard as well. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I see uh, uh, Marzia. Let me ask you to. Okay. Yeah, hi. Oh. I'm going to try to get my camera on too. Um, yeah. My question may be irrelevant because I haven't done my homework, but what I was wondering is whether or not the stretch is a bus route. Um, if it's not, then the question is irrelevant. But if it is, let me also lower my hand while we're at it. Um, if it is a bus route, what are the plans for having proper bus stops? And by proper, I mean easily accessible that are not on the slope piece of grass, um, you know, potentially, you, 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 know the, you know the status of the bus routes around town. And I'm not a bus user, obviously, or else I would know if this is a bus route. So um, just that. I appreciate the question. Thank you. It, it is not a bus route, and we're not aware of any plans to make it one. Uh, but we would have, however, point out that that is another reason and emphasis for the sidewalk connectivity so people can walk to the uh, adjacent corridors uh, on there. And, and so that that is, to be honest, in terms of sidewalks, the city is uh, very focused and committed, especially over the past few years. We've ramped up efforts uh, installing miles and miles of sidewalks each year to focus on schools, school routes. Number one, with and connectivity to bus routes, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, and connectivity to nodes uh, where people, destinations where people want to walk, and also providing long stretches of sidewalk of connectivity as well. So, so it is a target to to focus on to get the sidewalks to that city. So, awesome! Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, uh, okay, I see uh, Paul. Okay, Paul, let me see if I can get you unmuted here. Paul, let's see if we can, uh, whoop, unmute you here. Let me uh, scroll down to Brett's phone number and Brett I believe is actually even sitting in his office so I mean if you needed to um upstairs as well so uh, um Paul let me let's try let's see try again here to ask to unmute okay there we go Paul it shows you're unmuted And Paul, as Steve said, this is Brett. Feel free to feel free to reach out to me directly. Um, you can do it after the meeting, or we can touch base tomorrow, um, and we can address your your concerns then as well. Yeah, I, I apologize, Paul. It, it shows you're unmuted, but we're not we're not hearing you. So I apologize. Yeah, Paul, if you can. Uh, reach out to Brett, uh, his number is right on the screen. It's 515-208-4024, uh, 515-208-4024, uh, appreciate that. Okay. Okay, we'll pause for, oh. Hello? Steve, Steve, this is Carl Voss. I, I apparently, for some reason, I can't, um, I don't see a, um, 
raise a hand option, but oh. but I, I I do have a question. Um, so this is mid May. In June, could we have a a public meeting in an outdoor park or something that more like the open house style of meetings that you've had previously that that might get uh, more of the neighbors a, a chance to come and and check out your boards? Is there a, either that little um, oh, private sculpture park or one of the schools or a nearby park? Would that be a, a possibility you could take a look at? Absolutely, yeah, Councilman. Thank, thank you, thank you. We, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe in June, hold, holding, uh, we could see if we could search for uh, an outdoor shelter or some sort. We could bring boards and just have an opportunity for folks to come and talk more in an open house format. Uh, yes, thank you, thank you. Right, thank you, appreciate it. Okay, thank you, Councilman Ross. Okay. All right, uh, we'll hold for just a couple minutes here to see if there's any other questions. And again, Paul, I, I sincerely apologize. Like I said, it, it shows we're unmuting you, but I'm not, not sure what uh, we aren't able to hear.